Yeah, yeah, President uh, uh, Trump meeting with the, the trucking industry and the CEOs. Uh, to put this in context for you, this was before we kind of got word that indeed the House is going to delay the uh, vote on the health care bill, being pushed off to tomorrow at the very earliest. Um, but the president there saying he was hopeful that they could still get this thing through, but there is a delay. Uh, a press conference, by the way, from House Speaker Paul Ryan that was scheduled for this hour has been put off indefinitely as the leadership, as you can imagine, scrambling to get their party members together on this plan. House Republicans meeting behind closed door, uh, closed door tonight at 7 p.m., we understand. Well, it's been coming. It's been feeling like all day that the votes just weren't there, that they couldn't all come together on an agreement. Peter Barnes joins us now in D.C. with more on this, which is, you know, let's face it, a setback, I would say, for the Trump administration. Would you not, Mr. Barnes? Yeah, yeah that's right. And we've got these competing factions in the yeah. House Republican Conference. We have the, the Freedom Caucus that you've been talking about, the, the conservatives who are making their demands uh, for a, a tougher repeal and replace uh, legislation. Then you have the moderates, the so-called Tuesday group, uh, uh, another group of about 30 uh, Republicans who are concerned about some of the demands that the Freedom Caucus has. And so you have the White House and the leadership trying to find the balance, as Sean Spicer said. I can tell you the one bone of contention here between the two camps, uh, and by the way, the Tuesday group, as Sean excuse me, as Blake said earlier, the moderates are going to be meeting with the president uh, a little bit later today. So the, these, clearly these negotiations are ongoing. But one point of contention is that the Freedom Caucus uh, says it won a concession to repeal Obamacare's required health benefits mandate. And that's mandated coverage of, for example, pregnancy and maternity leave, which is not exactly something that senior citizens might need, the conservatives have been arguing. Uh, but some moderates oppose uh, this th this change in the benefits requirements, uh, uh, they they still want to have some guaranteed benefits in the package uh, in, in health insurance coverage. So we see that as a as a breaking point. There's some moderates who also uh, are concerned about the uh, rollback of Medicaid. Uh, they uh, in some some states, uh, Florida, Ohio, they have a lot of constituents who get their health care through Medicaid. Uh, so they don't want to see Medicaid cut back or changed uh, that much. And then you got the procedural hur hurdle that we've been talking about, Ashley, which is that they have to vote on legislation, right? Mm. But before that, they have to vote on the rules of debate, how to amend the bill or not. That's a separate uh, vote, and they have three you know, hours of debate around that. So if yeah. they were just even to get started with the rule, which ha the, the Rules Committee hasn't even finished that because it doesn't have a bill, you're talking about votes, you know, in the middle of the night. And that's the optics of that, yeah, that's not going to work. So, so we, so as a result, we see with all these uh, divisions in the party and the and just the procedural issues, this is getting pushed off to tomorrow at the earliest. Peter, from your perspective, how much does this hurt the rest of the Trump administration's agenda? We talk about the, you know, the uh, the tax cuts, the dereg, the the, the Dodd Frank, all of these things that were a big part of his selling uh, point on the on the campaign trail. It feels like uh, we know things don't go smoothly in Washington, but how much mm -hmm. of a setback is this? Well, it's definitely a setback on the calendar, right? Because they've yeah. said that they've got to do all this sequentially. They've got to do repeal and replace of Obamacare before they can get to tax reform. Uh, I think the expectations for repeal of uh, Dodd-Frank have been uh, way <laughs> cut back, mm. I, I've heard from sources. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so it... it, it We'll see. Um, tax reform might be easier to do uh, than than this because everybody loves tax cuts, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, but President Trump ran as the guy who could cut the deal, and he hasn't. So he, far. he hasn't got a deal yet. And so. Peter, what about uh, House Speaker Paul Ryan? I mean, he's the leader. How does this reflect on him? It, it, if if he can't deliver for the president, uh, that could be a setback for him too, and weaken his power. Uh, it shows that he uh, doesn't have as much sway, perhaps, over some of the factions within mm -hmm. his own conference. But you know what? All this is hard stuff. We've seen this this uh, rodeo before, and other. I, I was talking to our bureau <laughs> chief, Bruce Becker, about the TARP legislation <laughs> in 2008. Remember the big yes. bank bailout? Oh, that was going to go through. It was going to go through, and boom, it failed. Yeah. Market tanked what 700 points, and guess what? 
that got them focused. So let's see what happens if they do this vote, try to get something done tomorrow in the middle of the day and see how uh, the markets react. <laughs> sausage making ain't pretty, that's for nah. sure. Peter Barnes, great okay. insight. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank